Hello, hello, hello. So my name is Tim, and I, I thought I was going to have the honor of you know, thanking everybody for being here and staying awake, and I was going to be the last one, but there's one more. So I'm going to talk fast. to get two Oh, two more. Two more. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm a dad, and I'm a geek, if you hadn't checked that out. Um, and I am here to talk about Automagic Share, where our users are going to do nothing and get photos, videos, emails, and more. Well, the problem initially that we talked about was that I wanted secure email for my daughter. And we went out and said, this is a great idea. And we kind of thought about it a little bit. The next morning, went and Googled. And we found out the solution is already done, done really well and cheaply. And we said, well, OK. So we pivoted. So we went to the next thing. And we thought about problem number two, which we'd actually talked about, which is, what's the real problem? And it's about sharing. It's about how Junior here shares pictures of rainbows and unicorns and photos of him and his, his sister and little short messages and video snippets. And we said, well, OK, how do we solve that? Well, auto magic share, because he wants to share this stuff with grandma and grandpa and great grandma. These are groups that are not necessarily technologically savvy. So, well, what is auto magic share? Auto magic share is going to be a mobile app. And once you install it, you're done. It's configured itself. It creates a unique ID and calls back into what is essentially an email server. It says, OK, share this address with your family and friends. And then what they do is mail stuff like messages. You know, here's from Joey. You know, we went to the zoo. We saw zebra poop. I like horses. <laughs> Next, you know, photos of like you know fabulous little girls, and you know things like oh, a team of guys that worked for three days on this thing. Um, we also have video that you know might just again, this is just showing up on the device. The user's doing nothing. So you know, we've got video that just shows up on the device on this app. <laughs> Next thing up. Drawings. Drawings are very popular. Uh, you see the Batman logo. We got other things like, you know, I love you. I love you too, Vivi. Uh, and then at the end of this, when you sign up, you're going to get some sample stuff. And then there's going to be one last thing that says, hey, you know, you get a few. If you want to go premium, go online, spend a little bit of money. And then this uh, application will let you see a whole bunch of other stuff, right? So next up, business model. What is it? We already saw it. Subscription, 20 bucks a year. We said, OK, that's our idea. Now next, we said, well, what's our projections? If we had 20 bucks per year per user, how much is that? And here's the graph of stuff. And we said, well, if by the end of the first year, we had about 1,000 people per month-ish with a little growth. And that's around $20 per year. Break even is in about seven months. And if in the next year, we could just double that. So not like this big exponential thing, just double the number of users. We think we could make about 500 grand in profit because we're talking about not a lot of fixed costs and not a lot of development. Customer dev validation. We went and talked to people. We actually talked to about a dozen people there at the, uh, the event. And then we went ahead and went and uh, we said, what are our target customer? 21 million online baby boomers who are grandparents. There's like 75 million baby boomers total, but 21 are online. And of those, when we did some surveys and some testing, we found that the 30% surveyed said, I'd buy at about 20 bucks a year. I said, OK, that seems pretty good. So we even got some testimonials. So like uh, Miss Mary Belay, she says, I would pay anything to see more photos of my grandkids. And Chad Lehrman said, you know, I want it to be free. But even I would pay 20 bucks for my mom, my grandmother, and son to get one of these things. And that's another key thing. It's not about one user per one uh, fee. It's about you go ahead and get this thing because it could be Junior that has this thing. Next up, here's the team. Uh, Scott, Ed, myself, Tim, Matt, Dom. Very happy. We got uh, you know, PR, R&D, CTO, biz dev, CFO. And what do we need? Well, we figured for building the app just to go ahead and do this, about 85 grand, and we need a CEO, because we don't have anybody to do that. And there we go. Automagic share. Do nothing. Get photos, videos, emails, and more. What's your customer's next best alternative to what you're proposing? The next best alternative they probably have is Facebook. And a lot of people said they use Facebook. But of course, as we know, because of CIPA, CIPA, under 13, you shouldn't be online using Facebook. And it's a little bit scary what's going to get shared. The other thing is that when we looked at validation, people were a little bit scared about Facebook, especially in that demographic, because Facebook kind of puts it out there where it's a bunch of people and can be reshared. This, the main thing is that we're still going to have that security and whitelisting of who sends to that, uh, that application, so it stays in the family. How are you going to sell it to those 21 million baby boomers? 
This is the brilliance of dumb. He said, you know, he says, well, my mom, every piece of snail mail she gets with some ad, she looks at it and reads and says, hey, Dom, should I do this? And I realized, you know what? My mom does the same thing, and so does everybody else we talk to. And we said, well, we're going to do customer acquisition the old-fashioned way, of saying, you know, we're going to send this on out and say, hey, here's this thing that you can get or your son can get for you, and you get more photos, videos, messages, and drawings and stuff from your grandkids. She's also a home shopping network. Oh, and home shopping network, he says, yes. So how old are baby boomers? Amazingly, they say the group is between 40 and 67. And we, no. said, <laughs> you know, no, no. and we said, what? I didn't so, sing on. No, exactly. they're not 40. So we wouldn't know the, the years they put on there. And I said, no. Freaking way. So I think it's, it's closer. We figured between uh, our group. Yeah, exactly. 46, 64. Oh, the birth yeah, year. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was going to say, so after their gone but but 64 you do where the math, you go, that's still in the in the 40s so after that demographic's gone where's your new growth for that customer base after oh okay well there's actually a couple tertiary markets in there secondary and tertiary secondary is the great grandmas that are the technophobes they're just like hey i just want something i can barely touch and photos show up you know after they're i know after gone. yeah yeah i'm going the younger exactly the kids is the other side. Because if you look at that same diagram we had where the kids and the grandma, well, you think about in reverse, what we're thinking about doing is that once the thing shows up, it can have a little uh, smiley face in the corner to acknowledge that that thing came in. So it essentially does two-way. So you could touch that and write back and say, yeah, yeah, that, that picture of horses was really awesome. Or likewise, for the kid, grandma could send a picture of, because it's through just regular email, of kittens or whatnot, and it goes to you know the little kid's email thing. And they say, oh, this is really neat. And they can write back a quick little response saying, thanks, Grandma, love you. That kind of thing. So there's, there's no variant answer. I'd like to say. The question was, is there's no barrier to entry. And that is kind of correct. The thing that's interesting, though, is that the psychology of the baby boomer generation, for the most part, it seems like, is that once they're into something and it's set up, they're like, they don't really want to change it. It's like, it works, it's done. So if you acquire, we're hopeful that maybe we'd actually have people that don't go away. So the barrier is self-imposed from the people saying, hey, we're happy with it, we're good. Well, actually, that's not really true. I mean, Google was the last search engine. Sorry? To Vista, Northern Lights, da 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 Google was the last search engine. True, but it's used by everybody, not just the baby boomer generation. Yeah, I'm just pointing out, it's not necessarily yeah. them. Yeah. Um, part of the potential use case for this also is you think about it's kind of like a picture frame. So you, I would set this up for my grandma and it would kind of be sitting there. And it's something that I would have to do, okay, I would buy this as a gift for my grandmother. And it would be kind of like a piece of furniture. I mean, once I get this thing set up for grandma, like I'm not going to be over there being like, oh, is there something new for grandma? Is there something else for grandma? It's just kind of one piece of hardware that I want her to have so that she can see pictures and everything. It's not like... Once the solution is solved, I don't think people will be looking for something that's a little bit quicker, you know, a little bit cheaper, a little bit faster. Do you do you believe the thirty percent will purchase at twenty dollars? Why or why not? Um, was there a bias in the people that you sampled? Because if thirty percent buy, you're onto something good. Absolutely, good questions. Have no idea. We have 54 hours, so the amount of data collection we've had. Actually, the good news though is that while we've been sitting here and more surveys have been going on, the number has gone up and the percentage went from 30 to 33 percent. So you know, clearly it's not a huge sample set. But there's another use that we haven't mentioned. Um, grandkids like to ask for birthday presents, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so they could just take a picture of what they want, send it to the grandma, say, "Grandma." Can I really have this, please? And put that on repeat. The only video that would show on the photo frame forever and ever and ever until Grandma buys the kid what she wants. Good job, guys. Thanks.